All right, so we are live today. We've got, um, let me start over th that again. There we go, okay. So we are live today with, uh, I think this is episode eight, eight or nine, I think. I'll have to look, but um, this is, uh, I've got Jake with me from uh, GameGearMaster.com and he's gonna talk to us about um, just doing cool stuff with um, building uh, sets. I don't, honestly, I don't know a whole lot about um, playing D and D and stuff. So he's going to explain it to me from like a first grade level, which will be great. Um, cause I, I need that. So, um, anyway, uh, yeah, welcome. Hey, thanks. Uh, really glad to be here and, uh, glad to have my like first live interview be with a friend and somebody that I would be hanging out with regardless. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. So thanks for having me. I know, I know we haven't, we haven't hung out like in a while, like, uh, with COVID and, and stuff. And we're both we're kind of hermits anyway, so um, yeah, definitely yeah, when we definitely. get the shots, we'll 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 definitely hang again <laughs> soon. Yeah, but I'm looking forward to, have, to having a Guinness and sitting at a bar like yeah, you know, what people used to do. Yeah, man, so, no, uh, for sure. I I can't remember the last time like I've been at a bar like um, right, <laughs> it's crazy. But yeah, well, we man. got like we, we got like the takeout growlers and stuff here, which is kind of nice. And uh, right, right, they, they definitely yeah. step up their takeout game in general in restaurants around right here. So oh yeah, right. yeah, no, that, that. that's good. Where where do you get your where do you get your growlers from? Um, they were doing them at uh, at uh, Sweet and Savory was doing them, and also the place down. What's okay. the uh, there's the the beer place down by by the by the beach on Wrightsville. They do growlers. They've been doing actually for way before, from way before COVID, and they're they're reasonably priced. And there's also Wilmington Brew Brewery. Is that Lighthouse or um, Lighthouse? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Lighthouse. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, it's kind of inside baseball if you don't live where we live. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty close to you. The the Lighthouse. Yeah. Cool, cool. So, anyways, yeah. So I guess you know we'll get started. So, like, tell us about yourself. Like, you know, how you got started with Game Gear Master. What is it? You know, just explain yeah, it to sure. people that. Like me, that had no idea right. about D and D because I wasn't allowed to play it when I was a kid um, due to satanic panic and 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 all that all that stuff. You know the the way and uh, you know I'm a nerd, so I definitely would have loved. Right. Playing yeah. It, you know. So. And, and knowing you, and knowing how creative you are, I think you would really like it, and that's why you always have a standing invitation to come to my table and play D and D, and we'll cool. go easy on you. Okay. Um, but okay I guess, cool. I guess the first thing to talk a little bit about is what is Dungeons and Dragons or commonly known as D&D, &D, which I just said before without explaining it. D&D um, &D is, at its heart, is shared storytelling. It's you with a bunch of friends weaving a narrative together that's bounded by a set of rules. And it takes place, in the case of Dungeons and Dragons, in this medieval fantasy realm where there's magic dragons, dungeons, just like the title says. Um, and basically what you do is you roll some dice to see what happens. And there's players who represent single characters in this shared narrative. And then there's what's called the dungeon master or the game master in some types of systems that basically sets the stage and then tells players what happens in regards to what their actions are. So I may say I want to open this door and the, the dungeon master will say, um, hey, behind this door you see a 20 foot by 20 foot room and inside there's a chest with a plaque on the front that says don't open. What do you want to do? So it's simple setting up problems, setting up tensions, and then having the players solve those problems or tensions and moving the story forward. In the case of what I do and what GameGearMaster.com is all about, it's about a product called Terrainer, which is uh, both a set of instruction manuals, which is what I sell on GameGearMaster.com. And these manuals include templates and tools to make these little self-contained pieces that you can click together to make terrain or like, so if you've seen the background here, this, that's a castle, right? You can use this as a visual representation of what's occurring in your game. So when I said, hey, you open that door and you look into this 20 foot by 20 foot room, what I would do then is if I had terrain on my, on my table, after they open the door, I would put the chest physically in that terrain of setup that I've made and we would move little minis and put them in there. And maybe something would happen. Maybe there would be a ghost in there and then they'd have to fight them in, in, the, in the terrain on the table. It's a way to visualize the game. It's also a way to engage the players with more than just their imaginations in their head. Some people have a little trouble with that. Like they, they will want to have something more to engage them. Like I've noticed with people at the table, there's some that are 
great with just having it all be in their in their imagination. And then there's others that truly wake up when you start putting things on the table that that literally set the stage for that. Um, and it's it's a really fun thing to see, and it, it it adds to the pageantry of the game. Right. Um, you can also do this online, by the way, which is kind of cool. You can actually put a try your phone on a tripod and use that to show the the train, which is fun. Um, but yeah, it's been a it's been a really it's it's been a really interesting experience this whole thing. Um, so Torino is a thing that I came up with a few years ago. Um, I was initially the, the Christmas of 2017, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, it came while I was very unemployed, which is terrifying and both exciting at the same time. And I was looking for things to do, and um, I was trying a lot of different stuff. You know, that was when I started my YouTube channel and I started my media company. Um, and Torino kind of just grew out of that. And uh, Torino quickly became my main hobby focus um, a few months later, or maybe about a year and a half later, when I noticed I had posted something on Reddit about, about Torino. And it instantly, uh, in 24 hours, it got 12,000 upvotes. Wow. And that was on a small subreddit called RD and DIY. Wow. Um, and to this day, I mean, I didn't check recently. I, as of about three or four months ago, it's still the number one post on RD and DIY. That's crazy. <laughs> and also, then it got reposted to the the D and D subreddit, which is like millions of users. Right. And I checked that about a year ago, and it's still in the top one hundred posts of all wow. time. And that's when I was like, okay. Um, I, this is something, this is something that other people are almost ex as excited about as I am. Right. And there's, there are people out there who are geeking out over the possibilities of this just as much as me. And wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let, let's get this rolling, you know? Yeah. So I started work on two more manuals. Um, the original Torino basics manual, uh, was, was what was out at the time, I think. And then I started doing the Torino taverns and towns manual, which allows you to do like taverns and, and villages and buildings, just like general buildings. And then I also did the tech manual, which allows you to add lights and special effects to all these things. Wow. And uh, they went over really well, you know? Um, and now we're our community of diehard users. Hopefully some of them are here. Uh, our, we have a Discord group now that I just checked today is over 1,700 members. Oh my gosh, uh, and wow. They are amazing. I mean, these yeah. people, you know, it, it's just one of those things where I, I come from a lot of un, a lot of gaming cultures, and they right. can really go either way. You get some really toxic people, right. you get some really great people, right? But I um, I had been brought to tears in a good way from a lot of the people on on Discord and how they help each other and stuff. You know, um, we had people posting jobs there for other folks who lost their jobs during COVID. Oh wow, yeah, that's um, great. We have people that are doing this stuff with their with their kids, and they're posting pictures of them sitting around the kitchen table making Torino, and that's just been just Dude, you know, that's awesome. amazing. Yeah, it's really been cool. Sorry, long answer to a short question. No, no, that's dude, all that stuff is great. Like, you know, you, you explained to me like, you know, kind of the basis of of um how to play D D. You know, and I have more questions from that, which I'll probably get to in a minute. But uh yeah, and the reason I wanted to have you on here is this show, you know, it's called like Slackpreneur. So I consider you a Slackpreneur, you know, because Proud it is and I and I'm a slackpreneur, you know. And there's people out there, and what what it is is, it, you know, it doesn't mean you're slacking or you're lazy, but it means that you're just doing what you want to do instead of like, um, you know, doing a day job that you're just not passionate about. Not not that there's yeah. anything wrong with those people or anything, you know. You have, all been there. you have to do, but we've all we've been there, all you been know. There. Yeah. And before, like, talk about a little bit before you started this, like, what were what kind of work were you doing? Were you happy with it? You know, stuff like that. Yeah, you know, um, I'm really glad that you did this because I will say just just as an aside of what you're saying, I've seen a lot of people uh, in my sphere since I left my old position that are very much like you and I. Uh, in right. fact, there's a couple people in chat right now, Dirty Gibson, one of them that I think about, who does a lot of things on the side too and does things that he's passionate about. Right. Um, prior to, well, yeah, in my old job, I loved what I was doing and what I was learning. But um, when I got offered a different position there, it just didn't make any sense. And it felt very much like a dead end job. Right. So I parted ways. Uh, I loved the company. I loved the people. It was a great place to work. Um, but you know what? I was, I was also like, 
if I don't try to do the things that really feed my soul now, right? When when will I? Right. Um, and I had a couple of angels in my life at the time. I had my wife, Liz, who was right. incredibly supportive and believed in me being able to do stuff before I believed in it. Right. And then I had my friend Michael, um, who works at Best Friends Animal Society. Oh, cool. And okay. We have a great working relationship, and we became really good friends uh, prior to this because of Dungeons and Dragons, no less. Um, and uh, yeah, we we worked, and and he just gave me these great opportunities to do really great things for animals um, right. in the media production sphere. Cool. And I've been doing that ever since. And between Torino and between helping animals, that's fed my soul, you know, and it's, right. it's kept the roof over our heads too, which I'm eternally grateful for. Um, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I've been in those dead end jobs. I've been in the jobs where, you know, you're just, just dreading every morning and now I get up every morning and I'm excited. You right. Know. That's awesome, man. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, you know, I know we hadn't talked in a while and, and I was like, oh, man, like you're doing it full time. Because I remember last time we talked, you were trying to make it a full time thing, if I'm not mistaken. And I was like, oh, I don't know, like I, I get happy when people like are doing like doing the thing they want to do. I'm like, that makes me really happy. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was super lean there for a while. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Trino, yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. People. It's it's a hard thing to, for people to to understand at times, right. but you know when you look at Torino, Torino is is one of many things I do. It's not my main thing right now, but but between the right. media stuff, like doing voiceovers, doing right. video editing, doing special effects, and right. doing Torino stuff, you know we're able to we're able to 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 live the life that that we want to right now instead of right. You know we our stress levels less. We work hard, but but that's okay. Right. It's a lot easier to do that when you when you right. are really passionate about what you do. Right, um, but right. yeah, it's hard for people to realize that, you know, with Torino, <laughs> Google and Facebook made more money on Torino than I did, you know, and that's right, just the right. reality of selling things online. Um, right, right. But it's getting there. It's getting to there to the point where, where um, I can feed some money back into the system and uh, bring out right. some new stuff, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I think, um, no, I think you're definitely right, uh, you know, because, um, you know, I still have, a, you know, different, I don't have, like, one main thing, you know, um, like, I do, you know, the show, uh, piano lessons, I compose, like, compose gigs, um, yep. composer gigs, uh, gigs when, you know, after I get uh, my second vaccine, you know, so, I mean, it's definitely a lot of things, but, you know, I'm just, it's fun, it's stuff, you know, I'm passionate about, and, um, Music and you know, I think it's like Go ahead. that fits certain people. I think I think some people do like the regimentedness of a nine to five. But right. if you really like doing different things, and like right. and not knowing necessarily what you're gonna be doing next week, but just knowing you're right. gonna be doing something, you know, I think it right. really fits and it, and it keeps the monotony to a right. to a, a low. Exactly. Yep. And and I think if you're a creative person, that that is if you thrive on creativity and right. problem solving, that's it's a really good fit, you know. Yes, you will develop opportunities. Like you started this stream, and that's great. I think it's a really good idea, and I like the whole idea of this flatpreneur. I think it's a really good thing. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, people you, talk yeah. about a people talk about like a gig economy, right? But I think that gig economy, which was sort of like a side hustle thing right. for a long time, is becoming like the main hustle for a lot of people, like you and me. Right. And I think that's great. And I think COVID that's actually one bonus of COVID because right. people are realizing they can do a lot of stuff from home. Right. I, yeah, I had already quit my job. Uh, you know, I think April is going to be like two years, I think approximately, but, um, awesome. yeah, I, I quit my job, um, at a company, you know, just like you, great people, great, you know, it was a good place to work, but just not my passion, you know? Um, and you know, I got, I got a nice like 401k from it. And, um, it was, uh, you know, it was a nice, like, it was a nice, nice place for what it was but i quit and then i was like oh what do i do so like i like i did uber lyft a lot you know for like two months like while i was like figuring I it remember. out and, yeah and i was just like doing so many things and uh you know driving my wife crazy you know very supportive but um she's just like she's like oh my god judson like you're just doing like this and this you got to cut some stuff out i was playing like in a band and uh, you know um and she's like you got to cut out something you know she's very like um 
very stable. I think th um, things got better. Like, uh, you know, I've been in therapy and like uh, my therapist, he's like, it's like, I think you have ADHD. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, let's take this test, you know? And so, you know, he figured out, so like, that's really helped me, you know, just focus, remain like that's focused on like, I mean, you know, that we have yeah. friends, sorry to interrupt you. Um, no, go ahead. Yeah. You know, we have friends with ADHD and, and uh, I mean, some of them, one of them got medicated for it and it was a right. big difference. Another one, it didn't make any difference. Um, right. But lifestyle changes can help too, you know, or yeah. exercises and stuff, but yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I'm doing like a combination of different things and, you know, I feel like it's helping, you know, I'm, I'm not, you don't ever really like conquer it totally, you know, yeah. but you just, you know, it's like your brain is wired different, you know? Um, but yeah, man. Um, yeah. I quit the job. People were telling me, you know, I was crazy. I'd been there like six and a half years and, and I was like, you know, I'm not going to be 34 forever, you know. And you know, they're not wrong. It is kind of crazy. I mean, it is kind of right. going out on a limb, literally. Well, right, really, right. But I mean, you know, and, but but at some point, like I started thinking about it, it's only getting harder with age, you know. It's only getting right. harder to reinvent yourself yet again or find, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm a little older than you are. Right. So the older you get trying to find employment, it, it's right. harder, you know. Right. Um. But uh, it was, I've, I've been truly blessed with having an idea for something right. um, that, that people really resonated with. But it wasn't the first time I tried to do my own business. You know, this right. is the first time it was a success. Right. Yeah, it's same, same here. I mean, I, I definitely have tried like a lot of, you know, a lot of different things. And it's like, you know, it seems like a great idea at the time or whatever. But, you know, then it's just like a total, not a total mess, but like just just not what I anticipated, but I, you know, I try to learn from that. I'm like, okay, well, you know, that didn't work, but you know, this thing worked and I was good at that. So, you know, go, you know, just go on to the next thing using, yep. you know, using those past experiences, you know, um, and, uh, you know, just always trying to I learn to, too. Yeah. Right. I was learning is a big one for sure. And I was yes. always think, uh, there's one mantra in like entre entrepreneurship and also in de product development is, Right. Fail early and often. Right. Um, you don't, I mean, it's okay to fail, but, but you want to do it as soon as possible because you don't want to waste time on it kind of thing. Right. But that also means you have to be really honest with yourself. Right. Does this really work? Does this have a future? You know, right, I mean, exactly. originally, yeah. Yeah. originally GameGearMaster.com was going to import stuff from China and resell it. And, you know, that paper is what a lot of people do. So first of all, a lot of people do it. So good right. luck. You're going to have a heck of a lot of competition. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, how are you going to convince people to go and buy stuff off of your site if they can go to Amazon and get it? Right. Um, and so, you know, I mean, I had set up the entire site and I was doing stuff. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I support the site by doing YouTube tutorials. Right. Did that for a while. And that kind of felt like, okay, I'm a really small fish in a really big pond. Um, right. And then Torino sort of came around out of my necessity of having something in my table to entice my players. Right, right. And Torino came about too because I had no money. I, I couldn't pay for pre-made terrain. So I was like, I, I went to Dollar Tree. Right. I mean, you know, there you can get a lot of stuff for a lot of very little money. Right. And right. I started going, hey, you know what? If I like this, and I started doing the math on the stuff, like the like the, you know, I spent like I already had a glue gun, I had I had paints and stuff, but I mean I bought like five sheets of foam board for five bucks. Right. Bought some glue and stuff, and I made a ton of stuff. And I'm like, why am I going to pay a hundred dollars right. to get half as many pieces of stuff? On right. My table? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I don't even have the bragging rights to say I made it, you know, right, it's right. like, yeah. So yeah, it just felt like a win-win and, and, uh, but the hardest thing was sort of explaining to people what terrain it was because people do yeah, like, yeah. pretty often saying, Hey, do you sell the pieces? What, what are you actually selling here? Right. Uh, right. Well, we got our first question. Uh, I'm oh, going to okay. pop it up on the screen. So this is from, Evan and X and welcome Evan. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey Evan, um, good to see you, bud. So he says, Jake, did you try any existing D and D DIY crafting techniques channels when first Absolutely. starting the hobby, or did you pretty much start straight into the de development of Torino? So that's a great question. Uh, if you're familiar with DM Scotty, uh, he made uh, these 2.5D tiles. Okay, and they're great. They're really cool. Like basically, what they are, they're little little ground little pieces of ground with a grid on it so you can use them for the game. And they've got like a little ledge on the side that represents a wall. You can clip things onto there to sort of represent a space without the walls and without the 3D. Right. And I made those 
So that was really cool. Um, but I noticed what I was doing was if I was in a situation where I want to train at the table, they weren't really replacing very much of what I was using at the time, which is a battle mat, which I would draw out and put minis and, and props on. Right. I wanted something that was a little bit more substantial and was a little bit more impactful at the table. So that's, I kind of took the idea of, of crafted train from DM Scotty and Wylock. Uh, Wylock did a magnetic version, uh, which is really cool. I still use them every now and then. Um, but um, yeah, I kind of took that and extrapolated it out into that third dimension and uh, made it cool. made it you know be able to stackable and clickable right. and hold also hold together so you can take an entire piece of train and lift it off your table and put it back on your table. That's something you can't really do with the two D uh, tiles, but as as an addition to Terreno, I think those two point five D tiles from from DM Scotty and uh, Wylock uh, are really great. They're really great and they're very cost effective. Right. Cool. No, that's that's great. That's a great question. Um, very cool. So I guess I guess the question I have, you know, going back. So and we're going back to the games, and you know, and realize like I'm total newbie, you know. Um, so for example, like you were saying. And this this has to do with the rules. So like, the dungeon master says like come in, come in. You know, the, or you go into the room. There's a chest. So who like who decides like there's like a ghost in there or like um, how does that happen? You know, and this is probably a really like no that's, question, that's, but like yeah. you know, I this is like first grade level for me. You know, it gets that to I the need. heart of what what the mechanics are for sure. Okay, yeah. right. So you can sort of think of. Um, it, sort of, you sort of think of the dungeon master as a narrator, okay, and the players as a character, and they're in the they're they're in the same story. So in that scenario, um, after one of the players says, "I want to open the door," and you show them the chest, you describe the the dungeon master would describe the room, and then maybe for dramatic effect, you wait until they kind of walk around, and you say something like, "You you feel like a cold breath on your shoulder, and it's coming from the right, but you don't see anybody there." So okay. then you start to kind of get them a little bit like, uh, what's going on? Something's going on. So then they might roll for what's called a perception check. And they might go, I, I want to investigate what that is. And they'll roll to see how well they investigate. Uh -huh. Now that roll is going to be better or worse depending on the uh, talents of their characters. Like if, they're, if their That's character okay. is inherently good at investigation, they're going to have a better chance of figuring out what's going on. Uh, so see, let's okay. say they roll really, really well, right? They roll really, right. really well. And so they'll turn around, and I'll, I might say, "You see what looks like the silhouette of a woman, but it's, it's transparent and, and, oh, and it's okay. flickering in in the light of the torches." Interesting. And then they'll go, um, "I'm going to tell all my friends that I see this, and I'm going to I'm going to get my sword ready." Right. But I do want to talk to her too. I want to say, "I'm going to say um, hello and who are you?" Right. And then me as a dungeon master, I would say, I would, I would play the character of the ghost if indeed the character responds. Oh, and that's, okay. that's sort of the dynamic that keeps going. It, it is a passing of the baton from- so The dungeon master is like making it up kind of? Yeah. As, because, okay, okay, interesting, okay. You're setting the stage. So you, gotcha, you know okay. what the high points are or what they're gonna be doing, but gotcha, okay. players do crazy things, you know? Gotcha, okay. You may, expect, you may expect them to go hit that, kill that, try to kill the ghost. But then they may instead try to persuade and become part of their party. Who knows? You know, anything's game. Gotcha. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. It, that's what huh. makes it so fun because. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as a dungeon master, you're not just sort of like leading them from A to B to C to D. You are getting hit with unexpectedness just like the players are. So that's what keeps right. it fun and dynamic and exciting. Right. Okay. Okay. That may, that that makes more sense to me. So, um, Cool. So we have another question. Let me pull it up. Um, do you find yourself using your Terreno in every session now that you have a collection, or do you reserve it for sessions with special scenarios that you want visualized represented? It? That was Evan again. Great question. Yeah, I I really don't use it at every session, um, and this is for practical reasons, and also because every session doesn't need it. You know, there are times where you're literally just you have sessions where you're, where all your characters are, you know, roaming around town shopping or getting to know where they're at and whatever else. I really um, try to instill in my players a subconscious association with being have training on the table with okay, 
this is the big deal. This is a big story point. This is a big action piece. So if there is a big cliffhanger timing thing happening in the story, I'll put out Trano right. and I'll maybe have a, a, a physical engagement there with a bad guy. If it's the climax of a story, I'll have it out there. If it right. somehow is better to use to illustrate something specific, for instance, I was in a game with a local uh, dungeon master here in town, who did a great right. job. He was put it. He was taking us through um, something called Dragon Heist, which is a published adventure from Dungeons and Dragons, and we made what was our home base, where all our characters lived and worked and did their investigations out of. It was a place called Troll Skull Manor. So we had that permanently sitting on our table and that anchored us to that place in that story. And we mm -hmm. ended up redecorating it. We ended up opening it up as a bed and breakfast. We ended up opening up the bar and having the bartender that was be the ghost that was occupying the building. We basically hired yeah. him to be our bartender. So it became <laughs> the focal point of our adventure. Right. And it right. became that because we left Trano on the table, you know? And I think that that's um it's a fun way to give your characters a sense of place and a sense of right. purpose within your campaign. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Now that's that's really that's really interesting. So you know, a lot of a lot of imagination and stuff. Um, it's all that. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And you know what it does too, Judson? It really stimulates your imagination. And right. the fun thing is, you find yourself thinking about what happened in the game outside of the game. Right. It, it's it just fuels that creativity in people. Right. Right. No, very cool. No, I love, like, I love, you know, just sounds like a very, like, community kind of thing, um, yep. you know, just community-based. Um, you can definitely, like, nerd out, you know, with, like, different, uh, about your character, you know, the different skills, because um, my son, you know, for a little while, he's, he's six, but he was obsessed with Pokemon, and I had no idea, you know, about Pokemon and stuff, so we went to, like, you know, a battle, you know, here in Wilmington and they were super nice there, you know, they're very accepting oh, cool. of my son, you know, like he didn't compete. Cause like we just didn't, we didn't, you know, we just want to learn the basics. So, you know, he played against this other kid and, you know, it was just interesting. And, um, cause I definitely, um, I definitely didn't know, um, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of things about it, you know? And, um, right. so I, you know, it was just like, well, you know, um, but yeah, it's in apparently Pokemon battles, like the card game, it's, it's a big deal. You know, I just, um, yeah. didn't realize how, how big it was, you know, just, you know, you know, card games in general are, are really huge. Um, yeah, Magic yeah. the Gathering, which is sort of right, like a D &D right. equivalent, Dungeons and Dragons equivalent of that. Right. Uh, but right. it's all kind of like the same, same idea. There's this, there's this world context. Right. You know, the Pokemon, it's all the different Pokemon and stuff, but you know, um, but it, it's all kind of that sort of narrative in right. your mind, things happen in your mind, and the game, the cards and stuff, kind of adjudicate right, what's right. happening and what and what yeah. happens next. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. Okay, so um, trying to think of some other questions. Uh, what, where do you see like Terreno going? Like in five years, like what's your? Do you have any like goal? Sell it in, like Target or you know. Um, I don't know, like yeah. uh, Amazon, you know, I, I don't know if it's on Amazon, but, um, but different. No, it's only on GameGameMaster.com, actually. Okay. Okay. Only on, okay. So it's only on Game, and I posted the website. Yeah. So, you know, are you looking to make it bigger? Like what? Um... Uh, yeah. I, you know, um, I am, I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff coming out and, and I know people have been chomping the bit for it because I have. To my own, I, I, you know, if anybody knows who Elon Musk is from Tesla out there, he's always notorious for announcing things and then never hitting his deadlines. Right. Um, and I can definitely identify with that. Um, but I can say right now that uh, version two of Trano is oh, going to be coming okay. in the next couple of months. Wow. Okay. And what it is basically is it's the last two years of streamlining the way Trano is made, streamlining the tools, and streamlining the methods that people can use uh, so right. that what that means is that all the existing manuals are going to be in version two which is also going to have a redesign i've got a guy i've got a great talented super talented designer looking at that now and giving it a facelift and making it a little easier to understand right. uh it's been completely they've all been completely rewritten 
to be more concise. Uh, they're going to have more interactivity and make it easier to get to the corresponding videos. And all the videos have been redone. Uh, all the templates and tools are new. Uh, and that was in the with the goal of having less templates that do more work more easily. Right. And we're also going to add a couple more tools that are going to take out those pain points that people have been experiencing that I get asked about over and over again. The main one, which is making what's called the grid tile. That's like the ground piece with all the squares on it. Right. That you put uh, the walls and stuff in. That's kind of cutting the squares for that is kind of a pain. Um, and uh, I have... I've come up with a solution that I think I'm, is going to make people really happy. Um, so you'll be seeing that in the new version of the basics manual. The new version of the Traverns and Towns manual is going to have greatly condensed uh, templates that do more work with less muss and fuss. Uh, so you have to keep track of so many things. Uh, oh, and the wow. new tech okay. manual will have a lot of new, they're called uh, decorators. Uh, right. They're going to be things that you can attach to your Torino setups, uh, and there's going to be a lot of printable pieces, printable on any home or office or library printer uh, in that. And then we uh, are also going to be releasing two new manuals. OK. Uh, the, the Torino Castles and Catacombs manual. Uh, you can see what the cover might look like for that back there behind me. Uh, that is going to introduce double height walls and something called pocket walls. Wow, OK. Yeah, so not only are the walls modular, like you can put walls together, but you can insert different items into the walls to make them look and, and behave differently. So a wall could have an insert just to make it look like a wall, or it could be, right. um, it could be uh, you know, you could put a window in there, and the window could also be self-lit, so it'll look like it's glowing if it's like some magical effect or something. Cool. And along with that, we're also going to be releasing the Terreno Modular Grid Tiles Manual. Oh, wow, okay. So... Along with now, we've had modular walls all this time, but now we will have mod truly modulable, mod modular, modular reusable floors. Right. Um, and um, yeah, so the the process to get to that has been um, an adventure. Cool. Um, I, I don't. I think I'm not sure. Evan was on this live stream. I did a live stream a while ago where I showed some of the tools for the modular grid tiles. Oh, okay. And I was about this close to releasing everything, and, and yeah. Uh, just in showing some of those tools, I realized that I needed a, a second pass because, right. um, you know, I, the, the last thing I ever want to do is release stuff to the Trano community that may, it is too hard for the average trainer to make or is too hard to do consistently because, to me, the most important thing is to have a community that feels empowered by Trano, not intimidated right. by it. Right, right. Um, cool. You know? So, because I, yeah, I've noticed that so many people come into Torino and it's their first time, not only their first time crafting, right. but first time doing something creative. Right. Wow. And okay. it's always, it's always so sad to me when I hear that there's so many people in this world who don't, who truly believe they're not creative. Right. Uh, and it's just because they're an engineer or because they're a scientist or because they don't have a creative job. But right. creativity exists in all those fields. It, it exists in any endeavor you're passionate about. So um, I'm always really very, I, I'm always, I always come from the idea that first do no harm right, to the system. And the system right now is working pretty well. There's some things that are going to be fixed and be done better. And I can't wait to see what the uh, community thinks of these new improvements because, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm thousands of pieces in now building this stuff to wow, test it. Yeah. And I feel like it's, it's, I'm really proud of it. Yeah, Evan, Evan, he's in the chat. He's super excited. He's he had a question. Um, will Terreno version 2.0 be available for one time purchase or will it be only available through Patreon? Well, here's the thing. Okay. Um, all people who have the existing versions of the manuals, the Terreno Basics Manual, Terreno Taverns and Towns manual, and the Terreno Tech manual will get the upgrade for free. Oh wow. That's okay. a promise to you. Once you buy a manual, you'll get all the upgrades for free. Wow. So uh, expect an email uh, with a download link to your purchase. Uh, this also means that if you want to get ready ahead of time, if you end up purchasing any of those manuals, don't worry. You will be getting version 2 the second it's available. Wow. Um, you'll also see in the next few months, I will be slowly doling out the videos for the new manuals on YouTube. Now, this is because YouTube is kind of a pain. YouTube only really gives you the time of day or 
exposure to, to their users. If you're regularly releasing videos on a schedule, I don't do that, but I'm going to take this opportunity now that I'm replacing all the videos to right. get a little bit of a blip there and hopefully get more people exposed to Trano. But don't worry, all the videos are available from within the manuals on day one. Okay. Um, so, so don't freak out about that. Like you won't buy the manual and not have the corresponding videos. Right. Wow. Okay. So, Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the version two Trano stuff really came about because I started realizing this is also why I haven't been releasing catacombs and modular grid tiles because it felt like I was building these new pieces on a really weak foundation that needed fixing. Right. You know, there's things that, that got so improved for those two new manuals that I really had to go back and rethink the other ones and get right. them into parity with the new stuff so people weren't really confused or disappointed yeah. or whatever. So it's been a it's been a journey for sure. Dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Well, um, looking for any more questions. Now you send me a bunch of questions. I did, um, yeah. So people yeah. are really cool. Like they're like putting okay. questions out there. That's so awesome. so let me start with um this is from Brett. So he says, What has been your biggest challenge while getting Terreno up and running? So that's a great question. Yeah, I mean, for me, it has really been about figuring out what Terreno is. What is it to people? What is it to me? What is it going to be in the future? Is this something I want to do? Is this right. what I want to really put my passion towards for the next X amount of years? I might already put three years into it. You know, I have a lot of things that I really want to do, but. I mean, it was trying to figure out what it was. And I right. think um, my, the, the users are telling me what it is. You, Terreno is a gateway to empowerment and creativity. And to me, that, that is, yeah. And, and to me, that's what, what makes me want to keep doing it. You know, I mean, I could sell widgets online or something. That's fine. But this is something like, I, I, you know, when I see people who say, I've never done anything like this before, and this is what I made. That is that that I want to be my legacy. If I if I right. could do that, and this is the last thing I do in my life, I'm happy. You know. Right. So once I realized that that's what it was, and once I realized, you know, I can eke out a living, then right. Yeah, it was a no brainer to do this. But but that was the hardest part. Once I figured that that out, everything else fell into place because then I realized, okay, Torino has to be easy to make, it has to be cheap, it has right. to be really not intimidating. Right. And it has to be super accessible, even to people who have uh, special needs, because there's all right. people doing that, which, by the way, the new version should be able to do. Um, also, if like you're dyslexic, you're not good with numbers and stuff, the, the, the new version, well, you won't have to measure a thing. There's, oh, wow. There's okay. no measurement required. There's no learning, converting from centimeters to inches if you're overseas. It's, it's measurement agnostic. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, so that you know, it's really like the users, like Evan here, who has who sent me he three D printed a jig early on, and it was beautiful. He did such a great job. Hmm. Uh, those kind of guys, you know, three D printing stuff is coming around too. Um, right. That's something that, that we'll probably have on Trano uh, shortly, hopefully after the manuals are released. Um, awesome, awesome. Well, I have an, yeah, I have another question. Yeah. What have you enjoyed most about your experience creating Trano? That's a great question. Yeah, um, you know, I um, I create a lot of things. I build things. I, you know, I'm like you. I, you and I wrote some music together at one point too, um, and I build things, and that's been my life. You know, um, so there's two things. The, the one thing is is that that endorphin rush you get when you solve a problem, and that has been the the joyous journey of Trino from day one. The flip side of that is, though, I've lost a lot of sleep during the process because I, you know, I don't know what a solution is sometimes. Um, but that is also extended out into how to, you know, make Trino accessible to people, how to how to expose people to it in the right way. Right. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy that that problem, that challenge. I guess you call it. it's not really a problem. It's a, it's 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 a fun challenge for sure. Cool, cool. So I have another one from Julius. Or maybe oh, Julius. Uh, yeah, Julius. Before. Yeah. Julius. Yeah. Why no printed version of the manuals? Yeah. The short answer is uh, because it would be too expensive and Trino would not continue to exist. Okay. The long answer is uh, printing stuff is expensive. Printing on demand, which is the way to do a short run, would be really expensive. Right. That makes but sense. the the current answer that I have for this. And I hope people will take this to heart is 
that I truly do believe that the best format to have Torino manuals in is the digital one because they do change and because they will change and because those changes are really important and because everybody has a screen nowadays. Now, I know that's not true for literally everyone, right? but you know, it also allows me to be able to get it out there at a reasonable price and people are waiting to get started. They can start right away. Yeah, and they, no. can print out as, they can also print out as many copies of the, of the templates and the tools they'll need if they break one. Right. It just has a lot of really good advantages, and I, I hope people see that. No, awesome. No, that's that's a great that's a great answer. I mean, that makes that makes sense to me. Um, so Evan asks, what is your favorite Torino ter piece you've crafted? Um, you know, they're probably from the Stronghold set. I've got a really cool way to do doors now, where you print out the texture for the door on your printer, and then. Okay. You through a couple of templates, you actually attach those to an insert you can now put in pocket walls. Oh. They're really cool. Like it's a really good bang for your buck kind of thing because they don't right. take that long to make. And they, they add a lot of detail um, right. to your setups. I like those. I really like the uh, the ones from the tech manual. The, the we make, Justin, you'll, you'll see them in the picture behind me. There's like these little lights, like there's one right there. Okay, cool, cool. That's basically a little watch battery with an LED. Right. That's stuck in the skull bead. Uh, those there'll be details on those in the new tech manual. Too. Oh, okay, interesting. Okay. So when you turn the lights off at your table, you got these little flickering torches everywhere. It looks great. Okay. Hmm. So yeah, those are probably my favorite ones. I really like the tech side of stuff. No, that's that's all. That's super interesting. Like, um, you know, um, some of it I'll be honest is like way over my head. You know, but I definitely yeah, like yeah. learning a lot. You know, it's it's super interesting. It's I I love it. Um. So the the Ucom kit, Ukami kit. Oh, yeah. Ukami kit. Okay. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. If you started all over on Toronto, Toronto, Toronto. Sorry, um, with the knowledge you know now, what would be what would you do different or change? That's a good question. Yeah, um, that is all the stuff that's inverted to. That is the answer to that question. Okay. I would make it easier to use. Gotcha. Less of a barrier to entry and making tools that are difficult to make. And more flexibility with modular grid tiles. Okay. I mean, that's great. in a nutshell, but there's a lot of other little things in there too. Right. Um, and then he also asked, I'm just starting out. What is a good starting build to get my feet wet? Yeah, this is a common question. I do have an answer to this in the Torino Taverns and Towns manual, but in a nutshell, excuse me, I just had some seltzer and it's kicking back on me. Um, in a nutshell, it should be something that's not too ambitious, maybe like a few dozen pieces and a grid tile, and it should have a specific purpose. So when you're finished it, you have something to show to your players and you get that feedback. That's really important. I wouldn't say go build 24 wall pieces, 24 connectors, and a grid 12 by uh, 20 by 20 grid. I'd say, you know what, we're coming up to this part where they're going to be going into this tomb, and there is this uh, uh, sarcophagus room where they will be attacked. It's going to be, we're going to spend some time in there. They're going to remember this. Let me build out that room, just that room. Right. And that will get me to the point where I know what the tools are and how to make them. I know how to use them. And I will have something amazing to show my players. Okay. And then cool. see if they respond, you know, right. and then take that, have that feedback into you to build, uh, build onto your, your first starter set. Okay, cool, cool. So um, it says, we see Boleros, the bard, is often online, but who is this quiet man of legend? So, uh, uh, yeah, Belarus. Uh, he may want to. He may want to raise his hand in chat if he's still around. Okay. Um, but Belarus is. Uh, I'm not going to out him, but okay. he has been super, super helpful with Torino since day one, and uh, he was the guy who kind of got me nudged into starting the Discord channel. I was like, I don't know. I'm not that really. I'm not really that guy. But he's like, oh, you really should. And it's it's become the central, it's become the heart of the Torino community. Right. So I really thank him for that. And cool. he sort of hangs out when I have stupid, you know, you're talking about first grade questions. I have like kindergarten class, kindergarten grade questions for Discord. Right. Yeah. He helps me out with that and uh, kind of cool. keeps an eye on things. Cool. Yeah, there was, so there's another question. About a year ago, there were talks of a community storefront in the works. Other than some mentions about it from time to time, news on it is scarce. Can you elaborate if this is still being pursued or if it has been set aside to focus on other developments? 
It's a great question. Um, yeah, if it was up to me, this would have been out January 2019. Um, I'm sorry, January 2020. But um, technology, that's the answer. Technology and business models. Of There are, just like the Game Gear Master Store is an off-the-shelf software option that I pay for every month to run the store, there are off-the-shelf software solutions for marketplaces like Etsy. The right. problem is I have been trying to find one for a long time. The problem is, though, they're geared towards very large marketplaces. So you're right. talking thousands of dollars to set it up, thousands of dollars a month to run it, and right. thousands of dollars for the privilege of having it up there. Just right. not an option for Trano. Right. Um, I have been in talks to one company in Houston who does something called AmeriCommerce. And they seem very uh, on board with doing a less expensive, feature-rich option, but right. they're still working on it. Cool. Um, so yeah, technology is the reason. You know, I'm trying right. not to be the glue, the connective tissue between the merchants that want to sell stuff and them getting paid and their customers uh, being able to, you know, do what they need to do to interact with them. Right. And, uh, so, you know, when it, when it's the right, when I find the right fit, it'll be there. I promise. Cool. Cool. But I, I don't want to put it out there and have it be a disaster, which, which it would be right now. Right. Right. No, that makes a lot of sense. Cause you know, you, you can, you know, Milton Bradley and, uh, you know, those are big competitors for sure. You know? Um, well, yeah. You know, these guys were selling marketplaces to guys who were like doing resales of like copy machines and stuff and things. Right. And it's like, these are multi-million dollar companies. Right. Um, but the, the, the exact same kind of, uh, set of features would work great for a small marketplace. And I tried to make the case for them with COVID. I called them three months into COVID and said, here's your chance. You have right. a chance to get a budget friendly version of your software out there to all these small communities that can now right. not meet right. because of COVID. Do it, do it. And he's like, yeah, we really want to do it. We really want to do it. And then uh, right. hmm. not yet. It's a shame. Yeah. So um, the next question, did you ever play with Lincoln Logs as a kid or was it just Lego that to provide inspiration for an interlocking system? That's a great question. Yeah, people always equate it to Lincoln Logs. It's funny. Um, I never really did the Lincoln Logs thing. I had two I had two main influences. The first is obviously Lego. Um, how could you not be a kid from the 70s and 80s and not be influenced by Right, Lego? of course. <laughs> uh, but I was also influenced from my father's generation, the equivalent for his generation, which was something called Meccano, which is like an erector set. You would call it an erector set here in the States. Okay. But my, my family's from Denmark, and he had Meccano, which was a big yeah. British company that did that stuff. And uh, yeah, between those two, that was my childhood. Was, I mean, I started building stuff in those those two systems. I mean, I still do. I still play with Lego. And in fact, when I'm visualizing trying to set up new terrain layouts, I will use a little. I'll do like a little little version of it in Lego to sort of see how that works out. Wow, um, that's super interesting. <laughs> yeah, and, and clearly, Terreno is, is 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 very inspired by Lego. Um, yeah, hopefully. Uh, Cool. Well, I have I have a question from for me. So when I was a kid, um, you know, it was interesting and stuff. Like what 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 truth? You know, I, I was told like you know it was just dangerous to play. Like um, this is like in the eighties. Are you talking about like, a satanic panic? Yeah. So like you know, um, was that true? Like were people like you know just going crazy well, with it? You know, wild. Um, What's I mean, the way on? I understand it was that the whole thing kind of started because some college kids went into the sewers and played Dungeons and Dragons in real life. And I think one of the kids ended up dying. Oh, gosh. And, okay. and that sparked a lot of controversy. And that hurt the hobby for a long time. Um, but now I have a lot of friends who are devout that play Dungeons and Dragons and love it and then see it for what it is, which is something to fuel your imagination, not something to promote a, an anti-religious agenda. But yeah, right. it was, it was rough for a while. Like the company that makes Dungeons and Dragons, like they, I think they declared bankruptcy or they went out of business and they got bought up a couple of times, not some, by some stewards who were less than great, but now they're owned by a company called Wizards of the Coast who are killing it with Dungeons okay. and Dragons. And you know, today there's an estimated 40 million people just in the U S playing Dungeons and Dragons. Wow. Can you imagine? Right. I mean, yeah. if you're coming from the world of video games, I think at its peak, World of Warcraft, which I played devoutly, I right. think at its peak, it was 14 or 15 million players. And then you start wow. realizing, you know, then you start realizing what a smash success Dungeons & Dragons is now. 
And most of the people I play with, they're not old geezers like I am. They're in their 20s and 30s, and they love it. And they they do a better job at it than I do. Right. Do you think? And it's so nice. Do you think like shows like you know Stranger Things on Netflix? Yeah. Brought, okay. Okay. That's what I was thinking too, because I you know I. Oh yeah. Okay, because I saw like themed games, I think, and you know when yep. I walked into the the board game store here locally when I was taking Conan to. Uh, um, yeah, the play Pokemon. Pokemon. Thing. Right. Yeah. I so I was like, oh. about, by the way. Yeah, I was like, I was like, you know, that looks that looks really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. They had a theme. They have a starter kit for Dungeons and Dragons that is a Stranger Things themed uh, starter kit. Oh, and it's okay. a great way to start on Dungeons and Dragons. It's like fifteen bucks. Okay. I mean, how, how much? You will never get as much entertainment for fifteen bucks in your life. I promise you. Right. Right. No. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, it sounds great to me. <laughs> um, very cool. So um, now he Evan asks. Um, do you find yourself playing around with Torino nowadays, or is it pretty much strictly for work at this point? You know, I, I, I'd like to say that I, I play around purely for the joy of it now, but I think I, I think anyone can understand that if you've made, I think I'm close to 5,000 pieces now. I have okay. an entire room dedicated with Tupperwares floor to ceiling. Um, at this point, I try to put myself in the shoes of a user and try to figure out, what will excite them because I've kind of been there, done that with most of it. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes I do. Sure. If I have a, a setting that I want to show off, absolutely. Um, and that's what fuels me. But lately with, with being really busy with work and doing a lot of stuff, more theater of the mind as in not having train, um, I have not really, but um, that's not to say that, that I don't find a new piece to build that excites me. That's for sure. Right. That, that's what happens for me mostly. It's it's the design process for me, and then thinking about how people are going to geek out on it when it, when it gets released. <laughs> that that's yeah. where, that's where yeah. I find my excitement in, in Torino for sure. Right, right. I mean, just you talking about it. You know, I don't. I've never played, or you know, makes me want to like you know get one. And you cool. know, maybe like what you said, start simple. I wrote it down. You know, a few dozen pieces, and have like a uh, you know a purpose for them. You know, so I wrote that yeah. down. Uh, you I think know. it's really important to have a goal. Right, right. You know, the the building Torino for the sake of building Torino is, is a recipe for boredom, a recipe for disappointment. Right. So, so I have another question. Like, has anybody else like, um, you know, I haven't heard of anybody else doing like this kind of thing, like what you do. Like, um, are, are there like other people? I know you, you did mention like resellers, but um. Yeah, you know what what sets you apart? You know, I guess the personal yeah, aspect. Yeah, okay. this is a this is a good question. Um, okay. There are there's kind of two kind of big realms. There's one that's okay. super expensive. And there's one that's super cheap but a little bit more difficult. I'm kind of in the middle there. The super okay. expensive stuff is injection molded pre made pieces that then you paint yourself, and they're usually about usually dollars a piece. Gotcha. Okay. And then there's the train I was talking about that you can craft yourself from guys like DM Scotty and Wildlock, which is awesome. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's good for what it is. Uh, but some, you know, there's not a lot of clear instruction on there's some of those things, but you know, it's good for what it is. And I, I love that stuff. My stuff is sort of in the middle because it, it, it works. It only works because the pieces are standardized and the right. way they, we keep them standardized and accurate is through templates. Right. And a lot of design and a lot of R and D. So, unlike those other systems, first of all, it has the benefits of both. Right. It's got the modularness and three dimensionality of the expensive stuff, and it's got the the inexpensiveness and right. ease of building of the cheap stuff. Okay. Okay. So, but the it does rely it does live and die on on proprietary tools and templates, and that's essentially the, the heart of what I sell. And then around that is a wrapping of detailed instructions and videos and resources to hopefully make it really easy and pain-free for people to use those tools to make amazing terrain. So awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's, dude, that's, uh, that's super like, <laughs> like I, I don't know, I've learned so much about um, 
Probably more than you want it, right? Maybe I've gone to like the second grade level, you know. Um, right. but awesome. Well, well. Um, before we go, I just I want to do a quick, you know, uh, shout out. So um, there's a there's a nonprofit that, that I volunteer here locally in Wilmington called Northwest Youth Corps uh, Incorporated, and uh, they do a lot of good stuff with kids. Like we take kids on like field trips, uh, different things. I'm going to post their link in the chat. So if you can check out their website. No cool. question or anything, sign up for more information um, if you can't give a donation. Um, really great organization. And before we go, uh, you know, I just want to say thanks thanks so much for, you know, spending your time on a Thursday afternoon with me and hanging out. And, um, and uh, also, um, is there anything else you want to talk about or, you know, push? Or uh, just said thanks for letting me talk your ear off. Um, no, and, no, uh, it's dude. It's been fun, man. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've been having a, I've been having a great time. Yeah, so. it's been good. And awesome, uh, yeah, awesome. thanks for everybody for the questions, especially Evan, man. You rock. Um, yeah, yeah. Thanks, and, Evan. Uh, Evan. I apologize if awesome. we didn't get to everybody's questions. Uh, you can always just hit me up on Discord, or you can get me on Facebook chat. Um, okay, I'm cool. happy to answer anything you didn't get answers to. Um, awesome. I am so excited for the next version of training for you guys. I'm so excited to release those. Believe me, for everybody out there who's been chomping at the bit to get them. I can truly say that uh, nobody's chomping a bit more than me. So stay tuned. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Thank you so much. Um, and also, you know, um, I'll be, you know, hopefully uh, I can have you back, you know, next time we can be a little more like interactive like what, you know, I, 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 um, um, I have to learn a little more about, you know, the tech tech to do that, but you know, just see, you know, I'd like to see more like, you know, the sets and things like that, but Dude, thank you so much for for hanging out and uh, yeah, um, no problem. Well, yeah. let's check out GameGearMaster.com. There's uh, videos on there and there's a lot of pictures. Cool, good stuff. Awesome. All right, well, have a great day, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, same to you, buddy. Uh, right. Looking forward to that beer soon. <laughs> Sounds good.